Okay. So whenever you'd see a little satisfaction survey anywhere, it says, how likely would you be to recommend this platform, this service, whatever, to a friend on a scale from one to 10? And as the years have gone by, I, for Etsy, it's starting to move down toward a five or a four because I don't think Etsy works for everyone. Okay, I think Etsy is a good platform to sell on because it does bring you a big audience and you don't have to do as much work driving your own traffic and that kind of stuff. But at this point, you still do need to drive a lot of your own traffic. So let's be honest, Etsy is a platform. It's not the only platform. And on that note, let's talk about some other places where you might want to sell online. And this came from an article that I wrote a while back for my artist and shopping directory website. And I asked the people in my program, where else do you sell? Or where else have you sold? What, where would you recommend people to sell online? And they came up with a whole bunch of, of op opportunities. Now, I will say that some of them have gone out of business. So that's the problem is that whenever you find a new small platform and you're all excited about it, you have to weigh the possibility that they might go out of business because it's hard to build an e-commerce platform. People have said to me, why don't you build one? I'm like, are you insane? No, I'm not going to build my own e-commerce platform. No. And I, I do, I, I'll get into that later, but I, I have a platform that I'm using for my group, but that's a different situation. I'm not building one myself. It's hard to build an e-commerce platform. There's a lot more that goes into it. And I think if you really thought about it, it would be, you'd, you'd agree. So let's go through this list. And first it's Etsy alternatives for all sellers. So anyone who sells anything, it doesn't just have to be handmade. It doesn't have to be vintage, whatever. It, these are all places where you can sell online. The first is your own website. <laughs> Yes, you need to get your own website. And even if it's something that you can't put a lot of time into now, based on things that have happened to people that I know on Etsy who are main, mainly Etsy sellers in the last couple of weeks, they you need to have a website there so that when you need it, it's there. You don't want to be building a website when you're desperate. It's not a good, it's not good. It's not going to result in a good outcome. So have your own website. It's your own home base. It doesn't mean that you can sell illegal things, copyright infringement and all that on your own website because the platforms will check. The other things that people suggested were Instagram and Facebook shops. Now, I don't know, um, you know, and I guess this would go with like any social media that has a shop component to it because there are a few. Those can change also. I know that Facebook has made a lot of changes to their shops and they for a while didn't have a fee and now they do and you have to be able to check it on Facebook, which means that you have to follow Facebook's rules and Facebook's shipping limitations and I said no to that, but it is an option. So if you want to look into social media selling, you can do that. You can also... I was going to say Facebook Marketplace. That's that's uh, that's a little, you know, that that's a little garage sale-y to me. But I know that there are people who do sell handmade a lot um, on Facebook Marketplace and they do pretty well. I think you just have to be careful with that and just, you know, understand that most people are looking for cheap stuff on Facebook Marketplace. All right. Another thing that people have suggested, and I have never used this service myself, is Crate Joy, which is for subscription boxes. Now, what I have done for this video, I've gone to make sure that these websites are still active. I don't have experience with these websites necessarily myself, but it is an active website where you can go and it's, it has a name. I, I recognize the name. So you can go and check this out. If you want to sell subscription boxes, it might be a good fit. It might not be. And that's really up to you. Don't sell someplace just because somebody tells you to. I do think the one thing that you should listen to me is that you need to have your own website, but anything else is just a suggestion. It might fit, it might not. So it's up to you to decide that for yourself. The next suggestion was Mercari. It says Mercari is a marketplace that has handmade and basically used clothing or resale items. Now, I will also say that recently I've heard a lot of complaining from people about different marketplaces. And I think that Mercari might be one of them but I don't really pay much attention unless I'm selling on the platform. So it could be, but no matter what platform you're using, it's going to have problems. So again, you need to do your own due diligence. You need to check the platform, see if the terms look right. Some of them charge and some of them don't. So it's up to you to decide that for yourself, but it is Mercari is an option for some people. There's also Poshmark. Everybody knows the word Poshmark and that's mostly used clothing and housewares. It's very brand heavy. 
and it's probably very quality heavy as, as far as how much you can sell or charge for things. So you can look into that if you want to, um, up to you. Another one is Bonanza, same thing. It's been around for a while. It has a lot of categories. It is worth looking into. Another one that I had not heard of, but I checked and the website is still there. So there's that. It's called Truegether. This to me looks more like eBay than Etsy, but it is another platform that you can check out. I will also add that one thing that everyone could do is have a YouTube channel and you can sell things directly on your YouTube channel. You can use YouTube to send traffic to your other selling platforms. And I think it's a really, really good way to get to know your audience and let your audience get to know you and your business. So that's a conversation that is a, a lot more than just saying that, but yeah, I think YouTube, it's a good channel by itself, but it's also a good supplement to any kind of online business. All right, now let's talk about vintage sellers because this next section is about vintage. We have eBay and we have Ruby Lane. <laughs> okay, that, those are the ones that they told me. Now there might be other places where you can sell products, but these are the two places that the vintage sellers in my group suggested that you look into if you want to sell somewhere other than Etsy. Obviously we all know eBay and I know that a lot of people sold vintage on eBay a long time ago. So that it, it was a very vintage heavy collector heavy kind of um, platform and it still is. It does have a lot of restrictions. It has a lot of rules and you do have to be active on it. You really have to pay attention to eBay in order to get anything out of it. Ruby Lane, I don't know. I, I've never sold on Ruby Lane, but it is, it's all vintage and it is specifically for that market. So you can check that out. If it looks good for you, then you can try it. And if you have experience with any of these platforms, just leave a comment. If it's good or bad, that's fine. Try to be balanced. Don't just write, they suck because it, nothing, no platform sucks 100%. Some of them suck a lot more than others. But if you have reasons, and also if you're reading comments about something, don't take one person's experience as gospel because it, everybody, you know, your mileage may vary. Everybody's experience is going to be different. And like I said, every platform has pros and cons. For handmade sellers, now this is where it gets tricky because a lot of us who, like the people that watch this channel are handmade. We're making our own products. We're not manufacturing. We're not reselling. And some of these take print on demand and some of these don't because it's the definition of handmade is going to be different. So you need to check the rules on each of these. Now, I will say that one of them that was in this article has disappeared. So I, I did go through and make sure all these websites are active, but this is something to keep in mind that a lot of platforms that have sprung up over the years have disappeared or they've been bought by other platforms, like specifically to sell handmade. And, you know, I didn't put a couple of them on this list because even though I'm aware of them, I don't know how the longevity of it is going to be. All right. So the first one is Amazon Handmade. We all know Amazon Handmade. Uh, it, do you want to get involved with that? Maybe, maybe not. I know that there are people in my group who do sell on Amazon Handmade and they said it's a huge reach, but it's Amazon. So that's both good and bad. Okay. You need to investigate all of the fees. I'm reading from the article and terms that you have to follow before setting up a shop there. And it's also tricky because you can set up a regular shop on Amazon that's not just on Amazon Handmade. And they may or may not promote Handmade as Handmade on Amazon Handmade. It's, it's very weird, but they do have so many people that come to Amazon. If you want to go through the, you know, jump through their hoops. And if you're willing to, to deal with them, then okay. Now just be aware that Amazon does have a lot of fake copyright infringement and theft of IP. So it, you know, it's, it's the kind of thing where you're, it's a trade-off. Just make sure that you're balancing all this for yourself before you make a decision to go through with using this platform. The next platform, and I am very, I'm very pro this platform is Go Imagine. All right. Now Go Imagine is, is relatively new, but it is not brand new. I have no doubt that this platform is going to succeed. And the reason is the founders, the two, the founders who are in charge of this are awesome. And they don't have any reason to go public. They don't have any desire to go public. They don't have any desire to sell out and to have to accept all different kinds of things on the platform. So it is strictly handmade. They're also, you know, I could go, I've, I've written, I've, I've done tons of videos about Go Imagine on this channel. So if you want to open a Go Imagine shop, I have a whole playlist about that. 
and I am, you know, full disclosure, I'm a volunteer on their handmade integrity team. But that's one of the things about it that they actually do want to keep the platform handmade. And however that's defined is decided by the founders and the people on the handmade integrity team and the community. So it's not Etsy. I think that when people compare Go Imagine to Etsy, it's very unfair because they don't want to be Etsy. This is the thing. Go Imagine does not want to be like Etsy. Just because they both have handmade in the titles somewhere, they don't want to be like Etsy. And I think we need to stop comparing them to Etsy. It's a good place to sell. And I will say it is a U.S. only. It's U.S. only. So sorry for if, if you're not in the U.S., um, and I know everybody's going to leave comments. I wish it would come to Canada. They don't have ex they don't have plans to expand again because it's not an international. It's not the same mindset. So it is U.S. only. They do donate corporate profits to charity. That doesn't mean that you're donating donating yours. You'll get your money. But then the profits that they make go to charity after their expenses are paid. They have to pay for servers and that kind of thing. But it is a different business model that I have absolutely no doubt it will still be here in ten years. Okay. Next, not on the high street. This is in handmade sellers in the UK only. I've heard good and bad things about this, but obviously I'm not in the UK. So I don't know. This is the kind of thing that if you are in the UK, it's something to check out. It may or may not fit your business model, but it's, it's good to look into. Now here's, here's one that I had never heard of. It's called Spousely. Okay. And it's for things that are made by military wives veterans and first responder families. I find this amazing. Okay. I think this is really good. I, I don't know what the service is like. I don't know what the platform is like. And I would say that probably for all of these platforms that are smaller than Amazon, anything that's not Amazon, you're going to have to drive your own traffic. But I was, I was brought up in a military family. And the fact that as a family, you have to move, like they move you every two years when I was growing up. So you can't go someplace if you're an attorney, like if the spouse of a military person, you can't go and get a job because they're like, you're going to be moving in two years. We don't want to train you and hire you. Um, it's, it's really hard for the military spouses to, to find any kind of stability with their work. So I think that this is really good. And I think that selling online is a really good alternative for them because it you can do it from anywhere. Then we have Store Envy, which looks like it's mostly clothing and home goods. But it, it's I've said here, it does have some other categories. So you can look into that Store Envy. Um, then there's Made It, which is in Australia only. It's for Australian sellers. And the site says it's for unique handmade gifts made in Australia. So that's something to look at. Then for fiber arts and patterns is Ravelry. We all know, well, I'm, I know Ravelry. I don't sell on it, but I do know it. Uh, so it's it's pretty well known for patterns, for fiber arts, knitting, crochet, needlework, that kind of thing. Um, then there's Folksy, which is also in the UK. It's been around for a while. Again, I don't know anything about it because I'm not a seller on the platform. Obviously, I'm not in the UK, but it's something to look into. Okay, next we have alternatives for selling wholesale. If you are interested in selling wholesale, okay. I personally, for handmade, I it doesn't make sense for me. But if you are interested, we have FAIR, which has been around for a long time. We have Indie Me, which is curated wholesale. And those are the two options that people gave me. So I would look into this, but be very careful about the profit margins on wholesale because they're going to want you to charge them 50% of your base price. And that is going to probably take a big chunk out of your profits because it's handmade. You can't make it up with volume, basically. The next thing that we have is for art and graphics sellers. So if you're selling your artwork, photography, you know, digital stuff, we have Fine Art America. Um, now I, I know about Fine Art America. I don't think I have ever sold on Fine Art America because I, I think of it more as actual fine art. I would be careful with, <laughs> I would be really careful with putting any of your artwork that you are emotionally attached to and you don't want to keep chasing down because we all know that people steal images. They steal artwork. And we'll get into that with some of these other um, sources that I've seen, but it is a source that people gave. And I think that they probably... I don't know. I mean, I my guess would be that they probably do a better job at the copyright stuff than some of these other platforms. Okay, so the next one is Creative Market. I'm just going to name all of these, okay? Creative Market, Design Bundles, Creative Fabrica, and Design Cuts. 
All uh, my disclosure, my disclaimer is that these were all given to me by people in my group. Okay. I know for a fact that a lot of these platforms sell graphics and designs and clip art that are not really licensed to be sold and they're selling stolen artwork. So you need to be careful. And again, if you're super emotionally attached to your artwork, and if you have a market, if you have an audience that wants exclusivity, this is probably not the route you want to go. But you have to, again, decide for yourself. This is just me giving you the options and then you can go and see. But if you make clip art that you're not married to and you don't care if somebody steals it, it might make you some money to put them up on these places. I don't know. You know, it's the kind of thing where you need to check it out yourself. Do your own work. Okay. And then we've got Etsy alternatives for print on demand sellers. Now I will say, okay, let's start with the art of where that's W H E R E. I'll put this up on the screen. This is for Canada only, but it's, um, it's a marketplace. So if you're in Canada, it's something to look into. We also have things and there's tons of these. I did not write down all of the ones that I could think of because I asked the members of my group and these are the ones, these are the ones they had experience with. We have Zazzle, Redbubble, Printful, Cafe Press, and Spoonflower are the other ones that I have on this list. I have personal experience with Zazzle and Spoonflower, and they're both fine, all right? And I'm, I'm actually setting up a Zazzle shop for a different purpose, and I was thinking about doing some videos about that. So if you want me to do that, go ahead, because Zazzle is not easy to, to figure out. It's a weird system, just the interface is strange. But, you know, I'm getting traffic. I, I have sent my own traffic to Zazzle just by putting links on my websites. And I'm getting traffic to Zazzle already after five days. And I really just did start this five or six days ago. So it's not something that you can't get traffic to, but you do have to send your own traffic to Zazzle. It is print on demand. The good thing about it is that they do everything. They give you a little shop to set up. You don't have to export it to another platform and sync it with places. It's on Zazzle. And people know about Zazzle. The, the downside with it is that it's very personalization and customization heavy. So I think people go there for invitations and printables like that with, that you can customize for birthdays and weddings and that kind of thing. For They do have a lot of products. Though. So they have t-shirts, they have mugs, they have all the basic print on demand things. And it's a good option if you don't want to deal with the syncing and putting it in another place and play, paying a fee. I haven't paid a penny yet. It doesn't cost anything to set up, but their, their fees are kind of a weird structure. So yeah, leave me a comment if you want me to do some Zazzle videos. I was thinking about doing it anyway, but if there's no interest, then I'm not going to waste my time. Okay. We have Redbubble, Printful, Cafe Press on the list next. All of those are places that I, I do have a Printful account because I have some POD listed in my Etsy shop. And you can set up a shop, like a store on Printful, which I think is probably why I have it here as a place to actually sell. And then you would have to drive your own traffic to it. It's the same with Redbubble and Cafe Press. You're going to have to send your own traffic to these places, but they do allow you to set up a shop to sell. I know that a lot of these have a reputation for you put up a design and then everybody steals it. So again, do your own due diligence. These are the places that people have suggested. You need to be careful with, again, putting up things that you have an emotional attachment to and you don't want to be stolen. I wouldn't put the things that, you know, you, you do want exclusivity for on there because people are going to steal them. It's just, that's just how people are. They're dirt bags. Okay. So those are options and they're the things that the people in my group had used. There are so many more. There's tons out there. If you have a print on demand platform that allows you to set up a shop on the platform, let us know. Okay. Put it in the comments. That would be good. And if you have positive or negative experiences with that, also put them in there. Print on demand is very tricky because you have to be careful of the, the intellectual property theft. That's basically it is. And the last one that I'll mention in this category is Spoonflower, which is for print on demand fabric. And I do have a Spoonflower account for the dollhouse website that I had. I've since moved all that over to the artisan shopping directory website in the hobby section because I'm doing consolidating. 
Um, but I have a Spoonflower account, and apparently Spoonflower was acquired by, oh, what is it? It's another company that was very big with all the, you know, I, I bought mugs from them before for Christmas. You know, put, put your kids' pictures on a mug, that kind of thing. I can't remember what it is now. Um, but uh, there are a lot of complaints that I see about Spoonflower's customer service and the print quality and stuff in those groups. Now, I have ordered samples from Spoonflower and I didn't have any problems. They were good samples. The quality was good. I've made a quilt with the fabric that I ordered sp from Spoonflower. Um, but the people who were there before the acquisition have a lot of complaints. So I don't have that perspective. It's fine for me. And this is really for fabric. So if you are a designer who does graphics, you can put them on fabric and put it up there. You do have to send your own traffic. But I will say that even without sending, without making much effort, I'm selling on Spoonflower. Not much, but every now and then someone buys something and I'm always surprised because I haven't done really anything to promote it other than pinning some things and putting some links in some websites. So I put them on the website. I'm assuming that's where they're coming from. I don't know. Um, but I think that if I actually put some effort into it, I would be able to sell more. Okay. So those are my suggestions based on the suggestions that were given to me by my eShop program members. If you have any comments about any of these platforms, warnings for people, please go ahead and post them. But if you are a person reading those warnings, just take it as a piece of information. Don't write something off just because one person had a bad experience. Okay. But I think that you really need to be looking for other places to sell, um, especially with the crazy rampant nuttiness that's been going on on Etsy recently where they're taking listings down. Um, it's, it's not going to get any better. Okay. So just have other places. It's really important to have other places to sell. It's really important to diversify your income. That's it. Okay. So give this video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment if you have anything that you want to add and I will see you later.